Hi, welcome to our next episode. And in this episode, we are going to look at one of the basic objects in Fusion 2.5, which is the active object. So if I just do a File, New, I have a new application. And I'm going to open up frame number one here. And I'm just going to make this a little bit smaller so we can see the whole screen. And insert an active object. Now, what an active object is, is one of our basic building blocks for any type of game or application. The active object can interact with other objects. It can hold variables, as you can see over here in its properties. It has alterable values and alterable strings. It can have various movements on it. It's a highly flexible and it's definitely an object you're going to become very familiar with. Now if I double click on the active object, opens up the picture and animation editor and in here we have different animation categories. We have different directions and internally there's up to 32 directions. If you want to do 360 degrees you can also do that via the event editor. But to make it a little bit easier, um, the default is 32 different directions. We have various frames listed right here for that direction. And we have the options for that direction where you can make something loop or the speed of the animation that is displayed. All kinds of drawing tools. We have a palette over here. So if I wanted to draw a red circle. I could zoom in here a little bit and I could draw a red circle on there. We have a hot spot. That's the spot on your graphic where everything is going to pin together. So all of these frames, if there were multiple, let's uh, clone this. We can pin these together. So if I move this down to the bottom and let's also make this loop so you can really see it and I play it now, you see how it kind of jumps? Well, it's lining up on the hotspot. So in general, you're going to want to have your hotspot, you know, kind of be lined up for everything. So when you play it, you know, obviously they're off by a couple pixels or two because it's kind of shaking. And see now it's rock solid. Both of these are in the center. Um, for like a platform character, you're probably going to hotspot his feet. And so that way you know where his feet are and you can have them relative to that. Now the action point is different. The action point is used for if you want to shoot an object. Like say this was a rocket launcher. Well, the action point is where the rocket is going to launch from. So if his gun was, you know, if the barrel was up here, I could move the action point up there. You know, if it was in the front up here, I could move it over there. That's just another way to, you know, have a different point from the action point. Now, we can draw in here, or this can also import in all of the common file formats. So I could go over here to import. I could find this picture of Dexter. And I could select if I need any transparents or, you know, spreadsheets, where I want the default hotspot action point. You can always move that. And I click OK. Of course, we're zoomed in there all the way. And you can see now we have a picture of Dexter. And he is now our graphic that's attached in this active object. I can click over here, oh, I can click here and go create rotated directions. And now you see we have different directions for Dexter. If I could click on this one and put them like that. Oh, I don't want to put them like that, I want to put them like that. That way these two directions he's looking different ways. So if I switch in between those in the event editor, Let's say I do a, upon pressing the space bar, 
I can set his direction to the other way. So now if I run this, well, we forgot we had a loop on that one, didn't we? Well, I did. Maybe you guys didn't. If I press the space key, you see now he's over that way. So I'll show you why it's doing that right now. It's because these have two frames, and this one also has two frames. So if I delete this, and I delete this, now when we run our application, you see he's not looping through his animations. And when I press the space key, it flips to the other one. Okay. Now, another cool thing an active object can do is I can import in... This one's a GIF here. So let's import it in. Huh, why did we only get one frame? That's no good. Let's see. Import in. GIF, open. Oh, import in as an animation. I guess you have to do all these little steps. It didn't just import it in the first frame, and we wanted to import in all of the frames. And you can see it's telling me I have from frame one to frame four. And now we have four frames of fish animation. And you can see this. We'll click play. Well, I don't know if you saw that, but it only played through once. Well, we need to tell it to loop. And now when we play it, you see it loops to the animation. All right, so if you run your game right now, we have a swimming fish, and we have still have Dexter there. This does look like it's going a little bit too fast, so let's move this down to about 10. That looks better. Running our game now, you see it's a much better fish. He's looping his animation, but he's not moving around. If we wanted to make him move around, we would have to give this active object, say, like a bouncing ball movement. And let's make him move pretty slow. Run our game right now. And you see he's moving straight up, which is kind of odd for a fish. So let's uh, make his initial direction be one of those three. And now when you run your game, you see him swim off the screen away from Dexter, who'd probably like to eat him. Okay. And of course, you can do things in your event editor. As you see, there's Dexter, which we should probably give a name. It's good to name your objects, not just leave them active. But we can test for him to collide with the fish. When this is true, what do we want to happen? We can do all sorts of things. You know, you can make the fish invisible, you know, change an alterable value. So play around with some active objects. Get them into your game, import in some animations, and just kind of see what they do. Set different movements to them. And you're going to be well on your way to creating some cool games or apps. See you in the next episode.